well. At that particular time, the police was bringing a lot of pressure down on us. And the money wasn't coming in like it was supposed to or like it was used to because of because of the police pressure. So Mr. Hoover had decided that, you know, we have to do something to try to get the police off our back so we can get back to making the money that we was making. So he decided to call out to the other gangs to try to make peace, to try to get peace going on. And was that effective? Well, I mean, it got the police off of us for a minute. Was the Stop the Violence campaign something that you kept within the gangs that were a part of it? Or was it something that the community and the media knew about? Everybody knew about it. Were there any demonstrations or marches or anything like that? Yeah, we had marches where we went to other gangs areas and, you know, stayed in the areas for like a week at a time, socializing and kicking it, supposedly getting to know each other. Why do you say supposedly? Because nobody was really trying to get to know each other. Everybody was, objection, your honor. That would be speculation. Overruled. Everybody from my side, from my area, from the GDs, we was all doing what we was told to do. But in reality, we was keeping our eyes open, looking for weak spots and weak areas. You know what I mean? Because we knew that this wasn't going to last. So, you know, we just, you knew that it wasn't going to last. Going to last? Stop the violence wasn't going to last. So we was caught ourselves taking advantage of the situation and peeping out things. You know, this was the first time we was able to get in them areas to see what's what. You know, how it was shaped and stuff like that. And that Stop the Violence campaign in the 90s. Was that the only time the gang ever did something sort of positive focus? Or did you know of any other times afterward? Well, we have always, from the time that I remember up to the time recently, have had, try to have the movements, try to have Stop the Violent movements with the other organizations and stuff like that. And what is the purpose of those movements? The purpose of the movements was to be able to cut down the violence. That's the, that was to cut down the violence. And going back to the very first Stop the Violence campaign, did it succeed in getting the police pressure to go down? Yes, it did. And so in that respect, was it a success or was it a failure? I mean, well, the whole plan was to get the police off our back so we can continue to make money. So that happened. So I guess you would say it was a success. So after the Stop the Violence campaign, did the drug sales go back up or did they stay low? They went back up. Everything went back to normal. After the Stop the Violence campaign, did the gang get rid of the security and the UFOs and all that, or did those things continue? The organization security is a must in the organization of the gangster disciples. I was always taught by Mr. Hoover that security is a must. Without security and without discipline, you have no organization. And that was told for me, out his mouth. So we talked about you serving as a governor out on the streets of Chicago, Mr. McCain. Did there come a time when you were arrested as part of this? Yes, there was. Tell us about that. I was indicted in 1995. What were you charged with? CCE. Is that a continuing criminal enterprise? That's correct. Kind of a big drug offense? Yes, sir. Is that a state or a federal case? Federal. And were you the only person charged in that federal indictment? Or were there others? There were 39 of us that was indicted. All gangster disciples? That's correct. And tell us what, if any, effect that federal indictment had on the leadership and the structure of the gang. Well, it, 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 it damaged it. It damaged it a lot. I mean, you had guys that was, Your Honor, excuse me, I'm going to object to this line of questioning that I think it invades the province of the jury, and it may affect, and it's certainly 403. Overruled. Go ahead. What was the effect? It damaged. It damaged the organization. I mean, you had guys that was replacing us that really wasn't qualified. And within the years that I had been locked up in Chicago, as far as Chicago, the organization, is not nearly as strong as it was. Just in terms of the time of that indictment, did it, were most of the leaders, as well as yourself, included in that case? Yeah. The leadership of the gangster disciples on the streets was indicted, so they took pretty much the whole leadership off the streets. And Mr. McCain, obviously today you're testifying as a government witness. Back when you were first charged in the 90s, did you start cooperating right off the bat? No, I didn't. Why not? Because I, I, I mean, I was, I believed in it. I believed in, just to be honest, I mean, 
it was a white man trying to take us down. You know what I mean? So, you know. So is that how you viewed it at the time? Yeah, that's how everybody viewed it at the time. And it was more like we're political prisoners. You know what I mean? They hating on us pretty much. So, you know, at that time, it was, you know, you'd rather die. You know, you'd rather die. What about any of your co-defendants? Were any of your co-defendants thinking about cooperating as far as you knew? We had a few that cooperated. And I should ask, when you were, were you in jail before the trial of that case? Yes, I was. Did you have the opportunity to talk to your co-defendants or were you all kept separate? We was all on different floors together. You know, we might have one floor. We might have five. You might have like five, six floors. We might have six, seven co-defendants on each floor together. Was possible cooperation ever a topic of discussion among the co-defendants? Objection, Your Honor. Objection. That's irrelevant. Overruled. No, not. No, we never had those type. We always had talks about trying to come together to get some type of common plea that we all could live with. Was Shorty G part of the case? Yes, he was. Was your relationship with Shorty G still pretty good at that time? No, we had fell out. How did that happen? Objection. Relevance. Overruled. I started going to church on Sundays. And one Sunday, pastor gave an altar call and I went up there and gave my life to God. And when I came back to, by the time I got back to the unit, he had heard about it. He didn't say nothing to me at first about it. And he started watching me every day. I started going to like the Bible studies on the units and the prayer services on the units. And I guess my behavior had started changing. And one day, all the colleagues, we was just sitting around the TV and we was talking about when we beat the case, you know, what we was going to do. And they was laughing, saying, the Daffy going to be a preacher. He going to be a preacher. They all started laughing. And he like, yeah, we need a preacher in our organization. So now we have a preacher. You became a preacher, you get a church. We have meetings and things like that in the basement of the church. That's what they said to you? That's what he said to everybody, all the co-defendants that were sitting around. And I said, no, we're not going to have no meetings in no church. If I'm going to have a church, it's going to be, if I'm going to be a pastor, it's going to be for real. And he looked at me funny. And then he got up and walked off and went to the room. Then he, about five minutes later, he called me to the room. And he asked me what was up with all this church stuff. And I was asking, what you mean? And he was like, ask me again, what's up with the church stuff? And, you know, I was like, man, I'm going to church. You know, I said, man, we ain't got nobody else. We got to go thank God. You know, money, that can't get us out of jail. We stuck in here. We keep getting bombs denied and stuff like that. So, your honor, excuse me. I think this is improper bolstering of the witness. Overruled. So he was like, so you serious about the church thing? I was like, yeah. So he started brushing his teeth. And he told me that. He said, well, you know, you can't serve both. I was like, what you mean I can't? Why not? Why can't I serve both? I say, where said the law that I can't serve God? Like that, right? So he said, you have to choose between us and God. So I got mad, you know. Objection, Your Honor, under Rule 401B. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm admitting this testimony for the limited purpose of explaining this witness's relationship with other people in the Gangster Disciples and not on the question of whether you should believe or not believe the witness in general. Overruled. And he told me I had to choose between the organization and God. And I got upset about it because I had asked him, where is it in the law that said we couldn't serve a higher power? And he said, you got to choose. So I got mad and I told him, I choose God. And he told me to get out of his room. So I went out and went to my room. And about 20 minutes later, another board member came to my room and told me he wanted to holler at me. I told him, let him in. I asked him what was up. And he told me, watch your back when you get down to the joint because Shorty G going to have you hit. What does that mean? Hit. Stabbed up. Beat up. Hit. Violation. You know what I mean? Usually hit. When we say hit, we talk about death when we say hit. What did you do when you heard that Shorty G wanted you hit? He told me, man, don't say nothing. I'm just talking to you. But I got mad and ran out the room and I ran up and got in his face and told him that. So you're going to have me hit because you made me choose between God and the organization? I take God. And I got in his face and then they broke it up. They broke it up and he went his way and I went my way. 
I'll ask you, Mr. McCain, to make a long story short. Did you manage to resolve that problem with Shorty G, or did that continue? No, it continued. When I got sentenced and I was about to leave the jail later, I had a couple of co-defendants tell me to watch my back and be careful when I get, you know, when I get where I'm going because you're going to have me hit. And I'll ask you to make another long story short. Did you eventually go to trial on your charges? Yes, I did. And were you convicted? Yes, I was. And you received a prison sentence that you got now based on that? Yes, sir.